Right. Mr. Hobara, okay. thank you very much for taking the time to talk with us. Okay. Now, uh, we're here at the uh, European Geosciences Union General Assembly 2011, and we've heard some very interesting presentations, especially yesterday. Um, I would highlight especially the work from the Demet Demeter people, your own work, uh, your other colleagues from Japan. Uh, some of the Italians have been doing a lot of work on precursors, and um, that is obviously going to be in a very important field of, uh, of research. And um, so I'd like you to tell us uh, what area of precursors are you looking at? Um, yeah, especially also in, in, in what degree they're electromagnetic in nature. Okay. Okay, thank you, uh, Daniel. Um, so I'm just going to talk about briefly what we are doing in present. And also, you know, the, the signature from recent big super earthquake occurred in March 11th. Mm -hmm. So basically, in the last 10 years, we developed a system, a receiving system all over Japan. So we, we call the VLF receiving network system. And then we have five stations. In every station, uh, we receive the VLF, so-called VLF transmitter signal. Mm -hmm. uh, the VLF is a, a the frequency range of something a decade of kilohertz. And then the transmitter is distributed all over the world. In Japan, we can actually receive this transmitter signal uh, from the Australia and the US mainly. And we have the domestic transmitter stations. Mm -hmm. And then, for example, say here, uh, we have you know, the Kochi in Shikoku and Kasuga near Nagoya, Chofu in Tokyo, in my university is located, and also the Hokkaido. This is also the, you know, the research institute we have, and so they have set up the system. And the new stations are available now in the other part near Hiroshima. Okay. And then every station we receive these kind of, you know, the different transmitter signals, so that, which means one from, for example, south, other from the, from the west and so on, from the east and so on. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this, slash, this actually figure shows especially dedicated for the recent super earthquake, which occurred in March uh, 11th. But right. in fact, in the March 9th, we have the, also the earthquake in magnitude 7 or 7. Mm -hmm. And then we found out actually the, the, the path the, from the transmitter. In fact, one of the transmitters uh, located in Seattle just was located over the epicenter. Mm -hmm. And then the transmitter signal from the transmitter signal, normally you can get the, the property of the atmosphere. So how the atmosphere changes. So that's very sensitive to this kind of phenomena. Now, uh, we we have also the you know we receive the the signal from different receiving stations, a little bit away from the epicenter as well. So the two stations, right? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when we look at the analysis, you know, like we actually uh, developed the method for last ten years and then for last five years we accumulate the many seismic events occurred over Japan. And then we conclude that, you know, uh, the three parameters are important. One is the trend, so-called the mean amplitude of the transmitter signals. Mm -hmm. And the another one is so-called dispersion. If you know some statistics, that means, you know, how many fluctuations, you know, a lot of fluctuations. In this case, the dispersion is much bigger. The another one is so-called the nighttime fluctuation, third one. And then this is the integration of the night decrease. That means that when much, how much drop uh, of the amplitude during the night time. So these three parameters mm -hmm. are quite important. And then particularly if you are looking at the signature before the earthquake, that means the mean value drop. Mean values drop, and then dispersion is up, and the night time fluctuations up. So basically you see that the, the amplitude is going down and a lot of fluctuations in mm -hmm. the signature and you know, patterns in the, in the ionosphere. Now, uh, when we look through the, the most important panel here is that the, the path which is just uh, over the epicenter and then from the top to the down uh, bottom, you can see that this is actually the, the, the record from January 1st in, in 2011 after this March 12th. Okay, much less, so three months right. up, in, up to the end of the, you know, like, uh, the decent. So 
shaded region is you know, unfortunately no data uh, because of you know the dead power failure and so on. But you can see the mostly you know, each bar shows that the top panel shows average value, how much difference from the average value, and then second panel shows how many fluctuations, how many you know, fluctuations there, and then so the third panel also the nighttime fluctuations. And if you look through, and then March 5 and 6, that is actually the 6, 7 days, 6 is, here is the 6 days before the main shock in the March 11 earthquake, you can see the huge drop there, it's reach even to minus 4 means this is actually standardized, normalized by sigma, so that means 4 sigma means that huge, you know, statistically the huge changes the observed. And then other, during the other part, we don't have the kind of negative things, right? Negative mm -hmm. changes there for three months. And also dispersion is going up. That's a lot of fluctuation there, two sigmas. So the two sigmas is quite big. And nitro fluctuations are so big as well. So a lot of fluctuations are going down the ionosphere. So mm -hmm. this is a, normally we have the signature much milder in the, uh, in the domestic earthquake, because normally we don't have such kind of big earthquake in the land. If so, it's <laughs> obviously it was disastrous mm -hmm. already. And then the other uh, panel, two panels show the similar results, but from different parts, a little bit away from epicenter. Right. One here, one here. And normally you see, you see the near the same, similar characteristics. Of course, a little bit noisier, uh, because of a little bit further away, probably. The trend is negative. The dispersion is somehow the positive, as soon as negative, but the positive. And then the nighttime fluctuation is also positive there. But still the two sigmas, and one sigma like this. So that is the two sigma. So it's rather significant there. And the further away, you see also that the station like much milder, you know, like one sigma. It's not very serious, significant, but you see the similar tendency. So that is the kind of spatial dependence that, you know, the, just over the epicenter we have the lower, largest changes there. Right. So uh, we, we think that this is kind of, you know, the uh, precursory signal. And also this is, uh, this results consistent with our previous uh, statistical results already published, you know, in the quality journals, scientific journals are saying the lead time of VF signals, uh, which means, you know, ionospheric perturbations uh, in D region, is the bottom region of the ionosphere, is actually perturbed uh, five, six, or seven days, you know, six to mainly six to seven days uh, mm -hmm. before the earthquake. That is also satisfied the conditions. So this is the we regard, you know, kind of precursors. Okay. Um, so the main way that it happens is that you, uh, you look for a correlation amongst the different stations and everything else where there's, where there's a variance between each yes. one, you know that mm. that doesn't have anything and to do with the earthquake. Yes, and also the one, even you look at the one station that is very, very significant, that, you know, at least we see something happened, really something happened between the past, you know, between Seattle and uh, Tokyo. Uh, but, you know, in, at least, you know, normally we don't see the past in over the ocean. Mm -hmm. And then we look through the past within the, uh, my, you know, over the land. Right. Because we're focusing normally on the earthquake occurred all over the land. Mm -hmm. But when we had the, the earthquake, you know, magnitude over 7 and March 9th, uh, we thought that, okay, we may, we may better look at the ocean, you know, one, the one in the ocean, because the magnitude 7 is also, before magnitude 9 earthquake, the magnitude 7 earthquake, not very, very, you know, uh, how to say, it's, this is still very big. Mm -hmm. Normally, earthquake yeah. occurred in you know, over Japan before this super earthquake that magnitude of 5, 6 is oh, very big. So that's why we look through. And then we got such kind of anomaly there, so that we initially thought that this is a, the anomaly for 9th. It's mm -hmm. very easy to say that after the shock, anyway, but it was not, in fact. Also, we didn't. And uh, uh, to, we need, um, of course, the further work. We should be carefully address that, you know, the results, because the, since this pass is so long, uh, uh, different from the domestic network like this, so we, we have to uh, think about, for example, the effect, other effect, which also disturbs the ionosphere. Right. Uh, this is one of them in the space, you know, solar activity certainly affects the lower ionosphere if you have very strong flares or, you know, the magnetic storms and so on. Mm -hmm. So we would check the, the magnetic storm. But luckily, we saw the, some kind of uh, 
results from the other polls are say it's, uh, the magnetic activity level is not very strong in that time period. And also that we other thing is that thunderstorms, you know, the thunderstorm activity also affects the ionosphere. So that's why we try to remove this possibility by looking at either the uh, uh, maybe the uh, meteorological satellite images and also thunderstorm uh, lightning detection network. We actually we have the data, global thunderstorm data mm -hmm. in my laboratory because we have the one of a chain. Uh, we are involved in a network of worldwide lightning detection network. So we try to get the any kind of thunderstorm activity during this pass. And if not, this might be the very highly possible that something really uh, related to the earthquake. That's what we see. Okay. Because we've had now um, four very large ones. Yeah. I think above, what is it, above six, definitely. Mm. I uh, mean, after this one, yeah, since this one. Right. Yeah, we will one here. And uh, another one is near Mount Fuji. Uh, what is, this is six point something, I think. It's, uh, and uh, yesterday, yeah? Yeah. Yesterday, right. 7.4. Mount Fuji is 7.4. Right. Uh, and how do these, um, I mean, probably you need time to gather the data and, and analyze yeah. it. Yeah, sure. Um, so, yeah, the, the next question, I guess, would be uh, in which way could we develop sort of, uh, do, you, do you need to install, I mean, are you going to work with other institutions that, I mean, because you said the, the solar activity, ge the geomagnetic activity um, needs to be constantly also monitored at the same time. There needs to be obviously some real, some real worldwide cooperation here on this so that you can that you can be sure of your data. Is there uh, are there plans for that? Yes, uh, Dana, it's a very good point because uh, you know we have the, of course domestic network in Japan, but we are now intensified the international collaborations, and also we are we had the you know international conference not only in Japan nowadays. That we are collaborating on you know, new network, but a very similar network is now established in different countries. Also in Europe, you have the network by Italian uh, Italian people. Right. led by Professor Biagi, yeah. and also the subnet in uh, Southern America, South America. Uh, yeah. They have the Brazilian group already uh, established a network. Mm -hmm. The original is for radio astronomy, but in fact they try to use also the, the earthquake things. You know, that's the same. Uh, and also now the, the India, this is a very, you know, they are very much keen to establish such a network. And then also uh, in India, in you know, a different is institute, the people from different institutes try to collaborate each other mm -hmm. and then establish the VLF network, exactly the same as ours. And also, not only the VLF, but they try to organize more like VLF and the ULF and the potential measurements and the many different measurements they try to set up. Mm -hmm. Because in India, for example, say they have the earthquake region in northern part, like Kashmir. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's quite also interest, I, I, important for they are also the, you know, the, how to say, uh, protection of the country itself. Mm -hmm. So that's why very, sure. very, you know, important issue. Yeah. So we certainly have the collaborations. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the, we are already started the you know, collaboration, the data exchange policy. Mm -hmm. How long have you been, uh, or how long has there been in Japan, either by you or by Mr. Hay Hayakawa, this kind of observation? Uh, well, actually, you know, the, we have uh, we started the observation by using VLF for ten years now, almost ten years. VLF. VLF. Right. And for ULF, in fact, I myself also the when I started working in uh, present JAXA, I mean Japan Space Exploration Agency, you know, mm -hmm. the uh, last uh, the before the so-called NASA, the National Space Development Agency. And we have a national project, so-called National Frontier Project, in Jap supported Japanese government. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had uh, we installed the UAF sensors. So I actually have also I I worked on the UAF as well for since you know uh, 1999. Mm -hmm. So that I uh, during that time there was an, also the seismic swarm, earthquake swarm in Izu, and we had also these. So this is actually the near yeah, the beginning of our, of our serious work in this. Uh, you know, Seismo electromagnetic work. Mm -hmm. um, we've discussed uh, now, we've done interviews with a number of uh, people. Uh, uh, I'd like to talk about, because you made the very important point, it is, it is a security issue for the country to yeah. be able to have these kind of observations. It's actually just national security, just like you know, hurricane warnings, that kind of thing. We need to be able to develop sure. an advanced warning system somehow. Um, it seems that 
the governments are not doing enough, they should be integrating it into their, into their security measures or, or in some form. Professor Briaggi said he needed to get private mm. funding from a bank mm. to set up his system. Mm. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the NASA budget's being cut massively. Uh, we discussed just before some satellites either being launched, mm. not being launched, or if they get launched, then they don't have the ground crew to mm. do any kind of analyzing. Um, so, what's the what's the picture in Japan? Um, do you, I mean, do you have, uh, or or should we say, why do you think there isn't enough funding being done on this? Or well, is, what's the source of that? Mm. Well, uh, since we had the you know the we actually had some support. Do, did have the support from uh, government in a, uh, in up to uh, two thousand one. Uh, 2000, you know, for four-year project, national uh, frontier project. But mm -hmm. afterwards, uh, the the you know project was shut down, and then you know uh, we we didn't have uh, so much you know budget. So that's why mm -hmm. uh, we just you know try to continue as much possible, but in a small within you know small budget. Uh, probably um, one of the reason that you know um, the the. This kind of work is not really recognized a major part of so you know the articulation. The prediction itself is quite uh, you know the I'd say feasibility. The the, the government uh, thinks that the feasibility of the prediction is you know uh, quite doubtful. Mm -hmm. Still you know this stance is still exist. Um, but you know um, my viewpoint is that we we would have you know as long, this is a, we can. This has this kind of work is also, of course, a very much much more practical issue. This is important, but also in scientifically, uh, we need to uh, we need to work. Otherwise, uh, we will not get you know uh, right. you know the advance. You know that's mm -hmm. uh, so that's why um, even the, the small budget could we know this is it doesn't cost so much. For example, say the VLF system, like you know, see, so that some of the budget to be available, we can do very very good work. Uh, but yeah, it seems like the, yeah. the argument that the f current forecasts are doubtful mm. shouldn't be used to not not only you know the expand can, the, mm. the instrumentation, for example, mm. right? So that you know the government can try. You know we can we can try any kind different types of approaches. We say if this kind of approach, is, you know, this is one of the approaches. Like you know, last ten years we tried many different methods as well. Like. You know, not only not only VLF, not only ULF. There are two different things now with the promising, but mm -hmm. also there are the others. But you know, uh, when we are working on, and then some of them may not be very effective. It it will turn out. It turned out. So that's why we can just go into the, you know, just only the promising things that they go, you know, came up, in the still exist. Mm -hmm. So without doing anything, that we are not <laughs> doing anything. You know, so we need to, you know. Or work on you know different mm -hmm. fields and then try to figure out something you know which could be useful or you know still because you know there are a lot of unknown things about the earthquake that not only by you know uh, we may not only look through uh, by seismological classical seismological approach but also have the new, maybe different new approach can be should be promising sure. not only the electromagnetic but maybe can be other things as mm -hmm. well you know, say. sure I th I uh, would just call to people's attentions, which we'll also report uh, on the presentation of Mr. Duma from the uh, Geodynamics Institute here in Austria, who was just presenting some pretty, just some hard facts on, you know, the, uh, the relationship of sunspot activity mm. to geomagnetic mm. potential, um, uh, solar wind activity, solar wind speeds, and uh, geomagnetic potential, uh, things like that, which are just which, you know, obviously this is all hind in hindsight data, mm. but the fact that there is a correlation means that, you know, obviously we, we are lacking mm. some very clear understanding of some, maybe some common cause of both of these things mm. that per perhaps comes from outside. And the, and the very cause of earthquakes themselves is still, you know, still unknown, mm. really. Yeah. Um, Do you have any comments on that? Yeah. Um, you know the correlation. You say the correlation, Daniel. I mean, correlation is sometimes very, of course, a very useful method. But you know, to identify the earthquake on something, you know, between the two physical parameters, you know, relationship between the two. 
But you should be also careful that without understanding the, the physical mechanism behind that, mm -hmm. the correlation is some kind of very, sometimes very risky. Mm -hmm. you know, correlation analysis very, should be performed very, very carefully. Uh, for example, say, well, in this case also, that you have the it's kind of... It's more a way of posing new yeah. questions, right? Yeah. Like, why is this happening? Yeah. Not that there's some yeah. kind of causal relationship. Yeah, yeah and because the occasionally, the, you, can, you can get some, uh, uh, some kind of event there, that is the event here, then you, have, you may have some correlation there. Mm -hmm. you, okay, correlation coefficient might be very high there. But, in fact, these two may not be directly linked, because... Sure. With the other thing, intermediate thing can really, really, you know, uh, has a correlation. Then after this effect, other effect, and then you got a final correlation. Yeah, right. But completely different. Sometimes by chance you have some correlation. So that's why uh, we should be very careful to do that, uh, to elucidate, you know, why it has a correlation. Mm -hmm. We need, you know, really physical understanding. So yeah. that's why yeah, sure. this is also important, not only the engineering side, you know, mm -hmm. the practical side, but we have to understand, we, we, should, we should keep understanding why it's happened, and also really have to use a really, really physical approach, mm -hmm. like a really uh, the good statistics, and also we have to show the, the clearly the data, data representation is also very, very important, mm -hmm. like you try to make it very clear. Right, so this is a, this is a necessary for sure. this field that we yeah. actually feel. For example, mm -hmm. say we at least we need to show, for example, say not only the couple of weeks around the earthquake, but you know, okay, so like like five six years, mm -hmm. at least one year, and if it's anomaly, it really happens like only by this one. So, you know, it's a confidence mm -hmm. level is increased significantly. Mm -hmm. So that's a, this kind of approach is also very very important in this field. I think. So if we um just to just to get your reading on what kind of instruments and what kind of setup would be necessary to do exactly that. Let's, let's say the financial crisis is solved, you know, we, we're, we're on a path to economic growth, we're, we, we have an, a system in which money can be allocated to those things which are physically necessary to humanity. Um, you know, so if there were no financial restrictions and you uh -huh. could decide upon a system and the instrumentation that would need to be installed to do the work that you laid out, what would you what would you propose? What systems would need to be developed for that? Uh, you mean you mean not only these particular things? You mean um, I yeah, both I exactly. I mean, in the in the for the if there's more things like for example, Professor Biaggi was talking about in the v, in the uh, in the VLF area. Yeah. they have something like seven stations in Europe. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, I think in the case of our field, you know, that uh, one thing is, that, you know, nowadays we have uh, enough NASA, enough number of various stations now, so that the investment for the system itself is actually is almost done, I think. is it. But, you know, the thing is that now uh, we have to improve, to improve the much more like algorithm, the how to enhance or uh, uh, to uh, enhance the... Uh, the confidence level of this kind of anomaly. This is the, to do that. We need also the physical understanding as well, mm -hmm. and also that the, the approach is that not only you know uh, the VLF, the only single method results from single method is very difficult. Sure, I mean exactly. unreliable. So that's why we have to have the kind phenomena. of combined. Yes, mm -hmm. we need for them. We have a ULF network with a you know ULF uh, observation network with our colleagues as well. So that's why. We, uh, but you know, ULF is only we can by using ULF. We, it covers only the local area within hundreds kilometer from the sensor. Mm. So that's why we are not able to cover the old Japan now. So, but you know, there's some kind of the intensified so region. But like, maybe we should. Yeah, we should. You know, maybe mm -hmm. distribute. But especially the populated area, like in you know, near Tokyo, uh, we we have you know a couple of stations so that we have. We're able to look through, but maybe in the other part, you know, like uh, Osaka or some others in you know, the big cities around big cities, this may be necessary. And also that you know, other uh, precursor, other phenomena like radon and the others, you know, the different frequency also not only by transmitter things, uh, that combinations of mm -hmm. this kind of uh, you know kind of you know uh, uh, big systems, you know, right. warning system mm -hmm. from multi input, you know. Uh, much Can you give some examples? Yeah. Uh, for example, say uh, VLF anomaly and the ULF anomaly 
and also the meteorological information and also radons, okay. right? So those kind of inputs should be processed. Right. I mean, combined and processed. That if the anomaly is due to if the anomaly is due to the meteorological phenomena or space phenomena, like you know, maybe you know the space solar activity should be implemented. And so in mm -hmm. this case, you know, we have to separate those right. from the you know the earthquake anomaly or something else. Mm -hmm. uh, so this right. is uh, maybe the idea. Uh, okay. Right. Um, what. Uh, what are, I mean, what are the, uh, okay, well, we, we, have to, we have to wait, I guess, until, uh, until you, you've been able to look at the things with the last, with the, with the recent earthquakes. Sure. Um, do you have any comments on, uh, on what, the, uh, what we can expect in terms of increased activity um, that there are, mm. I mean, yeah, I mean the, these the, kind of res research activity? I mean, uh, um, no, I mean in terms of seismic activity, in terms of, uh, what we can expect, because uh, there have been, um, with these, even though mm. there's no physical understanding that is provided by the mere correlation, for example, between solar activity and mm. earthquake act activity, the things that, for example, that Mr. Duma presented mm. yesterday, he mm. said that he expects uh, this, uh, a kind of a seismic maximum mm. in the year two around 2017. Um, do you have any comments on that kind of thing, or do you? Um, do you well, have something? My, myself doesn't have any. <laughs> you know, um, I'm not a specialist in this field. That uh, it's quite interesting, I mm -hmm. think. But you know, I'm uh, I have no idea about that. Okay. You know, the, you know, because we are focusing on more like you know uh, uh, the kind of short term increase. You know, like uh, short time phenomena, rather mm -hmm. than the long time phenomena. That's a long term phenomenon can be, yeah, also interesting, but maybe it's, uh, this is also, uh, you know, the area of seismologists, they know probably qu quite well, but long term phenomena, like, you mm -hmm. know, how many earthquakes within, you know, <laughs> occurrence probability and things they have. So that's why, you know, we try right. to focus on more like, you know, short term, like, is there anything in the earthquake activity and within for the month mm -hmm. to uh, up to two months, you know? So that is a, our most interesting. What about volcanism? Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's a good point, Daniel. Because we also set up uh, the, some sensors near volcano, uh, not in the uh, VLF, but uh, um, ULF sensors to monitor any kind of emissions. You know, the before, for example, say eruptions, possible eruptions. Mm -hmm. uh, we just started this kind of so that uh, we are going to look through, mm -hmm. and also probably you know volcanic. Activity itself, uh, maybe weather for we effect we never we never seen yet. So you know, good point okay. that we may we have a lot of active volcano in Japan. So mm -hmm. we may it may also have some kind of effect. Why not? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Just as a as a last question then, okay. um, because yeah, because of this real threat that earthquakes do pose and the immense destruction that they have and obviously in nations which are much less developed such as Haiti the devastation is enormous because the, so, the sort of the less developed state of their economy means that the, the people are much more well I mean it's basically a very their whole the whole way they they're able to build is just it's just terrible and so you have this mass mass destruction and their infrastructure still hasn't they don't have infrastructure really um, but because of this being sort of the motivation that we have, we can develop an ability to save lives. That should be sort of our humanitarian mm. drive, so to speak. Um, what do you do? You have any? Um, do you have any comments on some of the things that I talked to you about before with the with the sort of the longer term processes uh, involving? Yeah, the the movement of the entire solar system through the galaxy um, where we've seen that there is a there's preliminary um, well, there's a proposed movement of the solar system through the galaxy simply because of the amount of cosmic rays that have been measured for example in meteorites over millions of years so that there's there's a there's a yeah there's a phenomenon of um, there's a real cycle, you 
can say um, this is a I think, potassium uh, uh, isotope in mm -hmm. meteorites. Um, and that has been sort of proposed to be a 62 million year cycle. Um, and there's only, I mean, because we don't have, you know, uh, the, such a movement of other solar systems directly in correspondence with us, mm -hmm. seemingly, um, but more that the, there must be a way for the solar system to be sometimes more, sometimes less exposed to these huge amounts of radiation. And obviously the spiral arms are clusters of uh, yeah, stars, nebulae, mm. and also the super hypernovae pulsars. Um, and just because you said you looked, or you used to work a little bit in that field, do you see that there could be sort of some interesting, yeah, would that be a field that you would consider also that other people should, that should be looked into in terms of maybe recognizing sort of a more general sensitivity to increased seismic activity also in, in the short term produced by um, some kind of, yeah, general, um, yeah, sort of exposure to, I mean, to other sorts of radiation. Extra, extra galactic activities. This is which affect you mean seismic. First of all, extrasolar, but extra maybe, solar. maybe <laughs> extra solar. Electric. Oh, I have a solar activity. Well, I, mm, I have no. Unfortunately, I have no idea about that. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, the, you know, solar activity can really affect. It. So up to the moment, this moment, I haven't really no idea. Right. Yeah. At least I, I have not, uh, you know. Um, analyze any data yet but you know during this uh, conference mm. you know certainly some people the people show us some results that correspond you know correlation between the you know the the solar activity or magnetic activity on the also the earthquake thing so mm. well it can trigger probably something like that because uh some of the if uh, my point is that my viewpoint is that if there are the earthquake you, is in the preparation stage in the critical stage, you know, like self in the sense of, for example, in the viewpoint, self organized criticality, that you know that if it's the, that's in the threshold level, and then anywhere, anything, uh, just like sandbag model, like if it's anything just which can trigger mm -hmm. uh, the earthquake, would be sometimes maybe just for example, tide, of tide or force can be even possible, mm -hmm. because it's in, you know, the, uh, how to say such kind of force might be for example say the force itself is very weak but in the total force in, in the area is mm -hmm. very big so that's why it can be for example possible so that's why uh, even electromagnetic force like yeah sort of a kind of triggering mm -hmm. so not all the earthquake can be triggered by this one this kind of you know the uh, solar activity or somehow but you know at least some of them would be maybe it's 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 possible, mm -hmm. uh, but you know this is my just viewpoint, and then uh, sure. you know uh, we have not taken into account this kind of effect yet. But it is, you sure. know, it, no, yeah. it's 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 clear. You need to yeah, yeah you need to is, be able to. It's getting clear probably. Yeah, getting clear. I think you know this mm -hmm. kind. The all different types of approach would be uh, necessary because in our case also the when we use the wave data, we actually the the disturbance produced by solar activity is actually we don't need it this actually this kind of activity is a mask our uh, observations you know the our data you know sensitivity it's a yeah i mean nuisance yeah that's all we try to always separate it okay. but you know in other sense if the such kind of high solar activity trigger the you know the earthquake that's also we have to think about the, the algorithm, you know, that also we should we should take into account, you know, so mm -hmm. far we have not taken into account anything. We just, you know, try to remove this effect. Mm -hmm. But if we just also have correlation, then we have some kind of, you know, the triggering force will be available, exists. So we need to improve our algorithm, you know. So in this sense, you know, that's kind of important. I try to keep eye on that. Okay, yeah, oh, that's important. Good. Yeah, yeah no, great. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Good sir.